Today, we can at the emergency operation center at the Ministry of Health and Sanitation concerning the press conference where they call, we get for do with the suspected African swine fever. Now we go inside the press conference room for get for witness the press conference. Uh, permit me to give you update on suspected African swine fever in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Update on suspected African swine fever in Sierra Leone. Now, on the 20, 20th September 2009, sorry, 2019, first formal letter or alert received from the community health worker from the Mau, Mau, Mua, uh, Waf community, Mua Waf. Mua Waf community, Western Area, Urban District reported of peak death cases. Investigation team carried out by joint AP team of the Livestock and Veterinary Services Division of the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations and two blood samples were collected and shipped to Teco Veterinary Central Veterinary Laboratory uh, in the Bombali district for diagnosis. On the 16th of October 20, 2019, Food and Agriculture Organization received an order informal alert on peak death cases from the Crew Bay community, Western Area, Urban. An AP team from the Ministry of Agriculture, that is Livestock and Veterinary Services Division, and Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations went to the site carry out investigation and two samples were collected live and dead pigs and shipped to take a veterinary laboratory in the same uh, uh, district Bombali. Findings from the field uh, the findings were about more than 1,000 pigs were affected at Krube, Moa, Eastern Bome, and Kanike communities. A total of 1,042 pigs died from the affected four communities. Clinical examination re revealed the following signs and symptoms, namely reddening of the skin, air and snot, nostril, that is, depression and loss of appetite. Animals are kept on free range system, scavenging. Uh, visceral or intestine of the ac uh, affected pigs after slaughtering, slaughtered, we are poorly disposed of in the communities. Susceptible or healthy pigs feeds on the intestine, which is a recipe for spread of the disease. Public health action. Communities were advised not to eat dead pig carcasses. Also, communities were advised not to feed their pigs with dead pig carcasses. Communities were also advised to report cases, any case of sick or dead pig to 117 call center. Pig farmers were advised to confine they are susceptible, susceptible pigs. Limitations. On Unavailab availability of African swine fever reagent kits at the Teco Central Veterinary Laboratory to diagnose the collected samples. There is no vaccine or, sus or suspected or for suspected pigs or disease. No vaccine. In other words, 
Then few samples were collected. Recommendations. To collect more samples, spleen, liver, blood, from susceptible and sick pigs. Laboratory to put the necessary documents together to request for reagents. To heighten surveillance for the suspected disease around the country. Minister of Agriculture and Forestry, the Livestock and Veterinary Services Division, to make necessary documents that will allow uh, sourcing uh, from regional disease surveillance system enhancement project under the World Bank fund for action. Uh, to incorporate issues of pig steering management within the, de uh, the, the draft public health audience bill. Okay, thank you very With much. With those few words, I thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Jalo. And since um, this is not a zoonotic disease, it only affects um, animals and not humans. It's not of any serious um, human health um, concern. The only problem is that um, the economic loss to farmers. However, the Ministry of Health is concerned, and that is why we are operating on the One Health um, platform. We would ask um, the Director of Health Security, Dr. Vandy, to make a statement on this. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this press briefing. As we've heard from the Director of Livestock and Veterinary Services in the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, uh, we are concerned. Uh, I'm sure you have heard of the terminology One Health Concept. Our response to outbreaks of diseases or to nat natural catastrophe is of the One Health Approach. Uh, we are talking about African swine, suspected African swine fever uh, outbreak in this country. It affects pigs, mostly pigs, even among the animals. It's mostly pigs. Over 99% of the animals that are affected with this are pigs. So let it, let get it clear. We have not got any evidence of a spillover of this virus to the humans even in countries that have experienced outbreaks of this nature. Like China, uh, in Southeast Asia, many countries in Southeast Asia have, have been experiencing this, this type of outbreaks. We are in millions of pigs died or are killed to prevent spread of the disease. There have been no evidence of spillover to the human population. Likewise, in our case, we have not got any evidence as of now, of spillover of this outbreak into the human population. But nevertheless, we are concerned. As I said, our approach is One Health. Yesterday, we held a meeting here with all our partners and all the other MDAs involved. Minister of Health, various units and directorates, Minister of Agriculture, we have uh, the disaster management, uh, disaster management unit of uh, awareness we are also here the environment we are here because all of us are involved in this that's what we refer to as one health platform this is a virus affecting livestock but we are involved we are concerned because those carcasses may end up in the markets and people will consume it even though even though there is no evidence, we don't have any strong evidence yet that even consuming the meat may lead to transport of the particular disease. But of course, consuming com contaminated meat of any nature is what we are trying to prevent. It's not good. It's not good. Our system is so weak in the sense that some of these carcasses 
have found their ways into the market. And we have heard of this from social media, for some of you guys here, from media houses and from the, from the, from the social media platform. The information he's talking about, we got it from the media, from the community, from the social platform, like the WhatsApp. For, for example, I was in Kotonou attending another meeting, and I saw the WhatsApp messages sent out about this uh, incident. I think it was from, the one I got was from AYV yes. interview. Yes, I, I got that one on my phone. And I had to call my guys, what is happening here? So we are concerned. I came back, we convened a meeting yesterday to see what is happening so that uh, we can respond appropriately. We are, res we are having another meeting tomorrow. Uh, we have what we call EPRG meeting. That is Epidemic Preparedness, Resilience and Response meeting. It's on Wednesdays, 9.30 to 11.30 every Wednesday. That's where we meet to look at what is happening. Uh, for the health sector, we have improved our reporting mechanism from the health facilities. We have what we call electronic integrated disease response, surveillance and response, EIDSR. That EIDSR collects reports from all the health facilities we have in this country, government-owned health facilities, PHUs and hospitals alike, on electronic platform and is sent to our DHIS uh, host. That information is analyzed and we disseminate here on Wednesday to our partners. We are going to deliberate on this issue again tomorrow on the way forward. How to heighten surveillance. We know the report we, uh, Dr. Yao reported, uh, uh, read here is from four communities in Western area. We have pens across the country. There is no evidence yet, and we have not done maybe extensive surveillance mm -hmm. in those areas to ascertain as whether this virus has spread to that level. We are just concentrating on Western area among the WAPs, but these are where they are wearing peaks. Of course, he mentioned they are on free range. They are not in any confined peak pens uh, where stringent measures are taken to control, you know, outbreaks like this. If you have peaks roaming around, it will be very difficult to control such. And the, the sanitary aspect of it, he mentioned, some of the farmers, when they suspect that the, fee, the pig is about to die, or maybe has died, they will slaughter it, mm -hmm. remove the intestines, and throw it in the stream, the nearby stream, or maybe in the dust pit. The others, the healthy ones roaming around, we feed on that. And that is how the disease will continue spreading. It is difficult. We all know the sanitary condition at the day, or Moav, or Kanike, of all those areas we have mentioned. It is very, very difficult to control such. We are fortunate, as I mentioned, the virus is not, uh, is not affecting humans. We don't have any evidence of the virus affecting humans as of now, here, or even in the past outbreak in other countries. I'm citing the example of China because they have got a larger outbreak. We are in up to 40 million peaks where we are slaughtered to prevent the spread. This is the first time we are having this type of outbreak in this country. The first time we are having this, we are suspecting. We have not been able to, to confirm yet. Therefore, if we, are, we, we have never had it, just like Ebola, we are not prepared for it. We don't have reagent for it. We don't have test kits for it here. So what we do, all need, we need to do to collect samples. And the samples that are of, F, F, that are of relevance in this instance is the liver and the spleen. Mm -hmm. Not even just the blood. The blood has very small uh, concentration of the virus. We are looking at the liver and the spleen. And uh, for us to confirm it, we may need at least seven samples. Seven from the dead, seven from the life, from the healthy ones. To compare. We cannot do that one here. Either we take the sample to South Africa, no, or to Spain, or to England. These are the, the uh, OIE recommended laboratories for this type of investigation. We don't have that one here. But nowadays, because of technology, it's easy for us to get the samples in here uh, in a matter of weeks. Our lab can do the preliminary investigation here. So even if we do the preliminary investigation here and we find out that it's positive, it needs to be confirmed. 
and that confirmation could be done only in those three laboratories I've mentioned. Those are the ones closer to us. Of course, there are others maybe in Australia and, and the America and other places. But these are the ones that are closer to us. In Africa, it's South Africa that has the laboratory, uh, certified laboratory for OIE for this type of investigation. So what we need to do now is to heighten surveillance, as you mentioned. We are going to heighten surveillance to see if more farms are affected. How many animals are involved in this? We, we have reported the, 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 doc, the information we gave you is as recent as the 17th, 16th of this month. That's why we got the information. But our guys are still on the ground. We are now teaming up with MAF to ensure we heighten surveillance as well as to collect samples. Because collecting sample needs some training. This particular sample it needs some training. Uh, even though they have their uh, cows, cows are community animal health workers. workers. Cows. We have CHWs, community health workers. So we are going to train them, orientate them, just because just a day or so, to orientate them, to, to help them uh, do uh, in, 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 uh, improve or maybe heighten the surveillance of this uh, outbreak. As I said, only four communities have been involved in this uh, outbreak for now. We don't know whether it's extended outside this four. So we can only know that when we extend our, we send our food soldiers there to ensure they are in, in, in touch with the farmers, get first hand information from there so that we will have a, a comprehensive uh, picture of what is happening. But the good thing is, as, as we said, to allay the fears of the community, the, the general public, as well as you guys here, because you, you are going to be, you are the, our, our mouthpiece, you have to pass the information to them. The virus is the first time we are having it in this country. That's the point noting down. It's the first time we are having the virus. We are ill-prepared for it, in the sense we don't have the reagent to test for it, but then we can send the reagent out. The samples. The samples. We can send the samples out for the testing. That is one. Two, it affects predominantly pigs. And there is no evidence of a spillover in humans. But knowing where we are coming from, the Ebola outbreak, we are concerned. And that is why you are seeing Minister of Health sitting down with MAF. Uh, maybe environment will have been here. I even heard uh, ONS will have been here. They were here yesterday. And they are even coming again tomorrow to continue meeting. Our partners are, they are involved as well. Uh, FAO, WHO, and USAID, they are all in supporting mm -hmm. us to ensure we get confirm what we have at hand. What we are talking here is a suspected, if you look at the body here, it's a suspected African swine fever. It has not been confirmed yet, but the signs and symptoms are pointing to this. From evidence we have from previous outbreaks, it is pointing, pointing to at African swine fever, but that needs to be confirmed by laboratory, scientifically, before we are confirmed. If I, even for us for, to, to request for support from OIE, we have to confirm that it is African fever swine, uh, African swine fever before they can come in. We don't respond on suspicion. We need to confirm, we need to prove to them that it, indeed this is what we have at hand. So we are concerned. We are, we, we, are, we are very grateful for, I think the, the information went out yesterday, yes, sir. and uh, we have got a full house full of uh, uh, media people from different media houses. We are very happy. Uh, we are very grateful for this cooperation. We'll pause for now. I'm sure you have a barrier of questions for, for us. Uh, we'll prepare for that. Thank you very much. Brief. Questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah. right, so, um, we will go into uh, the questions and the we we'll would ask in batches of uh, five. After every five questions, we we'll allow the responses. And we want to also clarify that African swine fever is different from swine flu. These are two different um, diseases. This only affects, as um, the directors have said, affects um, pigs, domestic and wild pigs. Whereas um, swine flu is a zoonotic disease, it affects animals and humans, so it must not be confused. So we can start with the questions. You say your name and your media house. So before we come to the question, let me make this one clear again. African swine fever 
is not on our zoonotic list of diseases we are looking for. It is not a zoonotic disease. African swine fever is not a zoonotic disease. What does that mean? It does not affect animals and humans. And humans. humans. Only animals. It only affects only animals. 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 And predominantly pigs. And there For this is one. no way it can spill over to the human population. For the zoonotic diseases, that's where we have common interest with math. Ebola is a zoonotic disease. Rabies is a zoonotic disease. Lassa fever is a zoonotic disease. So that's why we have the common interest with them. But this one is predominantly pigs. pigs. But uh, nevertheless, economic importance. economic importance, besides, it may end up on the table of people. So we are concerned about that. That's why we are in together. I was just going to ask that, Dr. Fandi. Um, is there no possibility whatsoever that this can transfer into humans? Uh, that is one question. The other question is I'm just literally from one of the affected areas. And literally, I saw pigs dying in the last one hour. Mm -hmm. I stood there and I saw them really dying. Mm -hmm. and I've got pictures here to show that. You know, so is anything being done now to A, stem the spread amongst the pig population? And then two, the idea of the meat not ending on the table of people and whether that can affect human beings at all. Uh, let me start with the first one. Um, as I said, this is not a zoonotic disease. It affects only pigs. We are concerned because it may end up, and it may have been even on the table of people in this country because when the first case was reported, and the MAF team and FAO guys went there, as you have just reported, they were there at the scene of the community slaughtering a dead pig suspected of dying of this disease. It was literally, I think they were, they were, they were, the police came to their aid. They nearly beat them up when they told them they should not yeah, slaughter it. So that is where the challenge is. The pigs are not in pens, they are roaming. And it's very difficult to control this. When I mentioned 4 million, 40 million pigs die in China, not all of them were affected. But those that were suspected to be affected, all of them were slaughtered to prevent the spread. In our case, it's different because they are roaming around. Mm -hmm. And they are feeding from carcasses, from, from intestines, from viscera, from the dead ones, from the affected ones that are uh, ending up in streams and in, in the dustbin. So it is literally very difficult for us to contain it, to stop it from, from spreading. The best way to do, when you suspect the animal, kill the animal before uh, getting in contact in, uh, with, with others. That is the best way. Because there is no vaccine for it, there is no cure for it. Even in China, in other places that have got that, the only way to stop it, kill all the animals that are affected. But they have a different system of doing it, because if affect a pig farmer, killing 40 million of pigs, that's huge economic loss. In fact, you are putting that farmer out of business. So they have a mechanism of coming in to, to, assist. to, to, to assist. There's a mechanism yeah. with, with their farm, because they are better organized, and they have the better subsidy um, uh, policies in their countries. We don't have that. We don't even have organized farmers, uh, corporate sort of things that they can put pressure on government to even considering uh, compensation. We don't have that. The best way to do, as I said, is to stop break of uh, to break the chain of transmission. Is to kill those that are affected and prevent the transfer and movement of animals from the affected pets. But you can only do that when, you, when it's controlled. Here it's not controlled. You go to Bome or you go to uh, Bay, you see peace going as far as cutting tree. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to control that. Ask the other question whether it will affect um, the meat that people eat. We don't have any evidence for that yet. There's no evidence. Since the virus does not affect humans, we don't have any evidence that even if it's affect, it's the, meat, the infected meat is consumed, by people, we don't have any evidence that the, the, the people, those consuming those uh, meat will be affected. We don't have any, any evidence. But we don't want that to happen. It's happening, yes. We need to have to find ways to stop it. But the only good thing is, there is no evidence that the virus will affect humans. That's what we have. And that's the only co uh, consolation we have for now. But we're putting mo mo modalities in place to see how to engage the farmers, to able to, di to diagnose Engage them properly, educate them, give them the education to know the signs and symptoms of this disease. When they suspect one, they should call somebody from MAF to see how we can try to either separate it from the others or maybe to kill it before even 
uh, before uh, uh, contaminating the waters. And Tiuna have done listening from the representative from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and also the Ministry of Health concerning the suspected African swine fever where they take place now in Sierra Leone. But waiting and get for say concerning this where they happen. We will bring this program come to you today. Me on name Nakona Sise. So we meet again to another edition of press conference. I say tata.